there's this misconception that miscarriages is a very rare thing. And today, I'm going to tell you one that is very, very far from the truth. As a warning from the get-go, as the title of this video should imply, this is going to be a very sensitive topic. Miscarriages is not something that's easy to deal with. So if you are triggered by miscarriages, if you're triggered by the any kind of graphic details concerning miscarriages, which I will be getting to a little later in this video, or if you're triggered by any such thing, please click away from this video. I don't want anybody to come to this video and get hurt because of any topic concerning miscarriages that I'm going to be talking about. Because it's not an easy topic to talk about. So, please go into this video with this big warning that it is not an easy topic to discuss. My goal of this video is not to hurt anybody because of the subject matter. It's to raise awareness of how common miscarriages are. It's to give a dad's perspective on miscarriages. And it's to dispel this belief that miscarriages are rare. Because they're not. They are very far from rare. And I will get into some more details about that. And I also want to talk about something that the medical industry needs to change which will be coming up when I discuss my wife and I's first miscarriage so stick around for that to start off I want to get the definition of a miscarriage just to get context to everything and that is the expulsion of the fetus from the womb before it is able to survive independently especially spontaneously or through the result of an accident and from my research, I can tell you that miscarriages is the most common type of pregnancy loss. And miscarriages often occur because the fetus isn't developing normally. And sadly, more often than not, they can't even tell you why your fetus or why the fetus isn't developing normally. You know, even after evaluations, they can't really tell you why you lost your baby. And really that sucks I mean there's no other way to spin it it sucks because you really have no answers and you left wondering what did I do wrong what can I have changed and really there's nothing you could have done differently you know and we've had doctors tell us that when we had our first miscarriage the doctor said you could have did everything right and still lost the baby and there's no reason they can give you as to why you lost your baby and as somebody that's been there you know it really sucks because you're always left wondering i believe miscarriages seem uncommon because not many people want to talk about it because it's not an easy topic to talk about it. and from experience i can tell you it's not easy this video is not an easy video for me to record because we have experience in it and it's such a sensitive topic that i'm really scared to put this video out there because i know somebody can get hurt by it and again that's not my intention but i'm going to get into some numbers now and these numbers are insane when you look at them because of this misconception that miscarriages are so rare when you start getting into some of these numbers it will completely blow your mind like when I decided to do this video and started looking at some of these numbers it, it completely blew my mind because I wouldn't have believed these numbers are true without verifying it through multiple sources and approximately 
10 to 20 percent of pregnancy confirmed by testing result in miscarriages before 13 weeks of the gestational period. So 13 weeks, and that's just the people who have done tests, regardless if it's home test or hospital test or doctor's test, 10 to 20 percent. But to go a little even farther with it, the estimate is as high as 31 to 50 percent of people who haven't been tested, who didn't even know they were pregnant. So that's a big number. 31 to 50 percent of the people who doesn't even know they were pregnant, pregnant miscarry. And to break it down, about 80% of miscarriages happen before 13 weeks. About 1% happen between 13 and 20 weeks. And less than 1% are stillborn after 20 weeks. And the age of the mother does factor, uh, plays a huge factor into it. The likelihood of miscarriages increase as with the age of the mother. And this chart shows you, and I will discuss this, or I will read this chart off. Five percent of women between the twelve, between the ages of twelve and nineteen, has a chance of miscarrying. Seven, seven percent of the women between the age of twenty and twenty-four have the chance of miscarrying. Eight percent of the women twenty-five to twenty-nine have a chance of miscarrying 10 percent between 30 and th the ages of 30 and 34 12 percent with the ages of 35 and 39 or between the ages of 35 and 39 16 percent between the ages of 40 and 44 and 27 percent for anyone over the age of 45 now i have looked at multiple graphs and this is just one of them and most of the numbers line up pretty good. I mean, there's some discrepancies between some of them. But some have the age of those of 45 and older with a chance a 50% chance of miscarrying. Now, I don't know which number to go by on that one. But even 27% is a large number. To give everything a little bit of perspective... There are about 4 million babies born each year, give or take. But there is also about 1 million miscarriages each year. And I'm going to repeat that. There are about 4 million babies born each year, but there's also about 1 million miscarriages each year. And those numbers are likely higher when you take into account that not every pregnancy is documented and not every miscarriage is documented. I know not everybody goes to the hospital when they miscarry, and some might not even know that they're miscarrying. I've heard of that happening. So there is a likelihood that both numbers, the pregnancies or the, the births and the miscarriages, those numbers are likely quite a bit higher and I want to ask you how is 1 million miscarriages a year compared to the 4 million births a year how is that uncommon it's not as common as births but I mean 1 million a year that is not uncommon at all and as I've already stated a couple of times now we have had two miscarriages my wife and i we got married in 2017 our first miscarriage was in we found out about it april 2nd 2018 we actually had i guess you could say a week or two prior to that we figured it was going to be a miscarriage but we wasn't completely sure we were still holding out hope then we had another one on April 15, 2019. So in a little over a year, well, about a year and a half almost, we had two miscarriages. And this is where I will start getting to 
some of the graphic detail so you still have a chance to click away from this video you know we did try to or we never pre prevented conception from the time we got married we were always under the the thing if, if it happens if ha it happens if it doesn't you know we keep trying practice makes perfect <laughs> but she first told me in a very unique way that she was pregnant and we were we used to do this thing where we would both paint pictures and have a divider between the two of us neither one knew what the other one was doing and I painted a joker like face from the dark night and she painted a stork carrying a bone. You know, at first I was lost, but you know, we were happy. We told our parents and we bought these little fox booties. And they are actually still hanging in our car to this day. And that's been, what, three and a half or three years since that happened. And after we found out that she miscarried, it did take about a week or so for everything to start passing. I mean, there was so much blood just about every time she went to the bathroom. And at one point, she just passed this chunk that was about the size of this microphone right here. And, like, it freaked us out. And we ended up taking her to the hospital because the pain and the blood loss got so bad. And they transferred us to a hospital that was about 45, 50 minutes away from our, uh, the hospital we were at in our local town. And I will never forget what happened when she got discharged. And this is the part that the medical industry needs to change when she got her discharge papers one of the ways that the medical industry classifies miscarriages is a spontaneous abortion and I will never forget the look on my wife's face and it was like she miscarried all over again she that that devastated her she would never in her life have an abortion she would never willingly give up a baby especially you know since we wanted one that was her biggest dream of uh, after we got married is to have a baby to give me my own child and to see spontaneous abortion on it completely devastated her and you can have your opinions out of, of abortion all you want to that's not the topic i'm discussing it's the fact that they they classify it as a spontaneous abortion we did not want to give this baby up and if you know anything about the Eng english language ab to abort means to give something up and we did not willingly give it up we did not spontaneously decide hey let's get rid of this baby you know spontaneous in my opinion you know is going to get a spontaneous tattoo a drunken tattoo whatever you want to call it but to classify it as a spontaneous abortion willingly giving up your child is terrible and i honestly believe that's something that the medical industry needs to change because that's not right i don't care what the reasoning behind it is the look on my wife's face when she saw spontaneous abortion on her discharge papers is enough for me to go in this and say that that is wrong. And that's something, and I've heard other mothers say the same thing. So don't think I'm alone on this. Spontaneous abortion needs to be taken off of discharge papers put down miscarriage put down something else do not keep it as spontaneous abortion because 
my wife did not spontaneously decide to give up her child. So, we need to find a way to change this. That is just wrong on every conceivable level. So, if anybody from the medical industry is listening to this, please change that. And I won't lie to you. After the miscarriage, miscarriage, we were scared to try again. We found out she was pregnant again in two, uh, late 2019. And I'm not going to lie, we were scared. <laughs> After everything that happened with the first time, I think we had every right to be. And we didn't really get our hopes up that anything was going to be any different. And she ended up losing that baby again. This time earlier. This time we didn't go to the hospital. But I will say that I was getting ready for work. I was completely dressed. And she had been having cramps for a couple of days. And she was scared that the same thing was going to happen again. And I had already got dressed for work. I was about to leave the house. But she had to go to the bathroom. And I went in there to tell her I loved her. And I would see her in the morning. And when she got up, she saw what ended up being our baby in the toilet. And she ended up scooping it out and held it in her hands. And I'm not going to lie, that was one of the hardest moments of my life. Because although we didn't get our hopes up, just seeing that image, it, it... it is something that you never want to see in your life. It's something that you can't get over. And I'm not a crying man, but I did call my mom right after it happened and let her know. And I almost broke down in tears right then. And... In all honesty, both times, both miscarriages, the one in 2018 and 2019, I was completely lost in what to do. And I know this is something that any dad is going to go through. It's hard for us to, or hard for a lot of us, to put our emotions into words. We don't know what it's like, and we will never understand what it's like. To lose something that we feel growing inside of us. So we can't... We can't feel it to the death that a mom can. We can be hurt by it. And trust me, I was hurt by it. And I will tell you right now that this is going to all the dads out there that have went through this or that will go through it. And I don't wish this on anybody. But it's okay for you to hurt too. I'm still scared of it happening to any of our future babies. Because I don't want to see my wife to go through this again because not only do I feel like there's nothing I can do, she doesn't know what to do either. And I'm pretty sure this goes to, for a lot of moms. They don't know how to handle this situation either. They they are hurt. They don't know what they did wrong. Or not necessarily what they did wrong. They believe that they might have done something wrong and never had done anything wrong. Nothing they did is likely to have impacted that baby from developing normally. And it's hard for both parents to handle this so dads it's okay to hurt it's okay to cry with your wife or your girlfriend whatever she is no understand that it's okay to hurt be there for your wife be there for your girlfriend but be there for yourself too and truthfully like I said I will always be scared of this happening to any of our future babies. And 
it's a fear that my wife holds too. It's a fear that will never go away as long as we are still trying to have more babies. And even if we're not trying, you know, it's still a fear that we're going to have if, you know, we don't try and she ends up pregnant again. You know, that's always going to be a fear there. I will tell you that in January of 2020, when the world was basically going to hell in a handbasket, we did find out that we were pregnant again. And we didn't want to get our hopes up. We didn't want to do anything because we were looking back at the fact that we bought one little pair of booties for the first baby and a, uh, an outfit for it too that we jinxed the baby. So we didn't really want to buy anything for the baby we found out that she was pregnant with in 2020. And we were scared the whole pregnancy. But we she's a happy healthy baby and that's her wearing my hat and that's Casey and Piper that they we were all right before we got discharged from the hospital and I'm not gonna even lie to you she's nine months old now or eight months old now and I still fear every day I'm gonna wake up and find this was all a dream that it was another miscarriage or like I told a friend last night while talking on Facebook Messenger <laughs> I'm scared that I'm still going to wake up and find myself single and not have a family at all so there is always a fear that's going to be associated with miscarriages after you have one or even if you don't have one it's easily to be scared of one because you don't know And for all of you that do the April Fool's joke of, oh, I'm pregnant, this is why people get mad about it or get upset about it or threaten to block you. It's not that we are being butts about it. It's that we, or many people, can genuinely get hurt by it because there's I know people who had multiple miscarriages and yes my wife had two and yes it hurts but there's also people who have multiple miscarriages like double digit miscarriages I have a friend that has had multiple miscarriages and then they had a stillborn so it sucks it doesn't matter if it happens that Two, one week, two week, 28 weeks, or a stillborn, it's always going to suck. So please understand that there is a reason people get upset behind the April Fool's joke of I'm pregnant. If you're not pregnant, don't say you are. Please, for the sake of everybody who either has had miscarriages or is unable to conceive because I know people who can't conceive as well and I think both are equally devastating in their own way. I will tell you that I came across a Facebook post that a friend shared as I was making this video and to me it gave a sign that I was supposed to make this video and you can take that for whatever you want to but watching or reading this post and I'm going to put it on the screen just like I put the graph on the screen but this video or this post just hits home on so many levels and I want to be honest I said some of these things before and now that I have the perspective I do, I see how wrong I was. And I hope anybody that can wa that watches this video will s uh, see this perspective I'm coming from. But this is what the post says. Please stop saying at least it was only early. Please stop saying it wasn't the right time. 
Please stop saying you can always try again. Please stop saying everything happens for a reason. Please stop saying at least you weren't that pregnant. Please stop saying you are still young. You can just try again. Words hurt. Whether you lost a baby at 8 weeks. Whether you lost a baby at 12 weeks. Whether you lost a baby at 16 weeks. Whether you lost your baby at 20 plus weeks. Your pregnancy loss matters. Your tears matter. You matter. And in closing, it should go without saying that if you haven't had a miscarriage, I hope you never do. And if you have had a miscarriage, I'm deeply sorry for your loss. And I hope it never happens to you again.